Good evening and happy Sunday to you, wherever you are tuning in uh, to this broadcast. Charles Wolin uh, with you and the rest of the team as well. Alex Morgan and Jamin Moore also joining you for episode 52 of Black and Azul. We have a little pregame show for you. The lineups are in for the 73rd California Classico between the San Jose Earthquakes, and the LA Galaxy. As you can see, San Jose at the bottom of the table there. They're looking for three points after they lost seven goals to one against Seattle in midweek. Um, I think we've got the lineups uh, sorted out here, but there's five changes for this San Jose team uh, for Matias Almeida. Lots of changes. Lots of changes I think the fans kind of want to see um, as as well. Um, Alex, good evening to you. Um, I saw your tweet first, so you get it first. Um, how do you think the Quakes are going to line up today? And definitely um, uh, some smiles around, a little bit of positivity with these changes tonight. Absolutely, Charles. Good evening. Uh, something clearly needed to change after uh, the, this past 7-1 demolition uh, to the Seattle Seattle Sounders in midweek. And it's five changes to Almeida's starting lineup tonight. Uh, looking at the lineup, we have a back line featuring Nick Lima at right back, Guram Kashia center back with Alanis, and then Lopez at left back. Uh, Nick Lima at right back is something that we were expecting because in San Jose's last game against the Galaxy, Christian Pavon completely overran Tommy Thompson on that left side. Uh, and Tommy just really doesn't have the pace or the 1v1 defending skills to handle Pavon. So that's why Nick Lima is there. He's returning to his natural position. He, you know, he, he made his name in professional soccer playing at right back. That is where he is most comfortable. Uh, and then Tommy slots into the midfield, which is something that Jamin predicted actually earlier this week. Yeah, I am super excited to get to see the rebirth of Tommy Thompson at the 10. I, something that uh, I called for in an article that came out uh, yesterday for patrons and today for, for everyone. Check it out if you haven't. But what we're going to get to see is Tommy Thompson. There was a rebirth from 2017, a little bit of 2018 in that central midfield. And I, I do actually like the Flo Youngworth uh, opportunity tonight at defensive midfielder. Flo understands what it takes to win in a Cali Classico, shutting down Zlatan Ibrahimovic in multiple multiple Cali Classicos. And he's got a chance tonight to help the Quakes and give Judson a bit of a break and to see, is he the right option when Judson does need a break? Because those breaks are gonna need to come. Jackson Yule stays in his spot. Wando up top, ob obviously he knows what to do. We don't really have an update on Danny Husen. He wasn't on the injury report. I would have liked to have seen Danny in front of Tommy just to create a bit of space. I'm very happy with Wando as well. Shea gets a start on the left. We already know that he's a galaxy killer. It's going to be a very interesting game tonight, guys. Jamin, I am super excited to see Shea Selena start along Chris Wondolowski. That's something that I called for. I, I've been calling for the last couple of weeks. They just have an incredibly strong connection. And I think their experience playing together uh, will uplift the quakes uh, in this California Classico. And for the Galaxy, you, you, you've got Pavon in there and, and Leggett um, playing in their attack as, as well. There's space for uh, Javier Chicharito Hernandez on the bench, as well as uh, Jonathan Dos Santos as well. Uh, we could see them um, in this in this um, fixture a, as well. Always a, a tough fixture between these two teams, but San Jose has actually had the better of uh, the history here in the last seven, four, two, and one. And usually this game takes takes place at Stamford uh, Stadium, lads. And now it's obviously behind closed doors, uh, no fans as well. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you think the occasion is going to be about uh, this evening, because there are no fans. And this is a very, very uh, special game to Earthquakes um, supporters. Yeah, the other thing that's going on is the air quality issues, right? I mean, it's, it's around 170 or has been for most of the day. And... You know, there, it is smoky here. I, I, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how that affects the players. We haven't seen air quality quite this poor. It wasn't great for Colorado, but it wasn't this bad. And so Almeida is going to have to consider if he's seeing that there's some effects of that on players trying to get those early substitutions in to really make it something that uh, is going to be able to keep the quakes, keeping the energy 
one of the things that Tommy Thompson said that uh, Almeida also wants to do is make sure that the Quakes control the possession in this game. There's very dangerous weapons for the LA Galaxy. If they can control the ball, those weapons, uh, such as such as Legette and Pavone, and potentially Chicharito later on, have fewer opportunities to score. I, I think that's that's the game plan. It's one of the reasons I believe that Tommy Thompson's getting the opportunity in the midfield along with uh, along along with Chloe Youngward. Uh, the the thinking is they those guys hopefully can hold on to the ball uh, and be able to distribute that ball and keep the attack moving. I think Jamin's absolutely right there about the air quality. I'm facing, uh, I'm at the top level of Avaya Stadium right now. Usually it's an amazing view out here. You can see the mountains. You can see for miles in every direction. But right now it is just a sheet of fog and smoke. Uh, you can see it in Jamin's screen, I think. You can barely see uh, a couple miles in each direction. And look, the Quakes have done well against the Galaxy under Matias Almeida, right? They won 3-1 and 3-0 in their two games against the Galaxy last year. Uh, and those were some of their strongest performances of the year. But obviously, recent history goes to the Galaxy because they defeated the Quakes 3-2 uh, just a couple weeks ago. And the Galaxy have been really strong in this latest phase of MLS games. They're 4-0. They've beaten LAFC twice, also beaten Portland Timbers. Uh, and, and one thing that they did against the Quakes last time was set pieces. They scored all three of their goals against uh, on set pieces against the Quakes, and uh, that's something that could that could come back to bite and, and haunt the Quakes again tonight. Speaking of the Quakes being haunted, they were somewhat haunted and maybe even a bit spooked from that uh, Seattle Sounders uh, game, losing seven goals to one. We had the chance, uh, Lance, to, to catch up with Carl Carpenter uh, earlier today. Uh, we would love to hear his thoughts, um, and we'll uh, show you that interview. Welcome to the Black and Azul pregame show. We're going to break it down a little bit more tactically for you uh, before we get to the starting 11s. Carl Carpenter is joining us alongside the rest of the team, Alex Morgan and Jamin Moore. Of course, Carl Carpenter uh, going to be starting at StatsBomb very soon. You are a tactical analyst and... Um, you know, the Quakes, they lost seven goals to one uh, to Seattle, giving up quite a few goals in the opening 20 minutes of this game, if, if not the first half. But let's start with this first goal. Um, Florian Youngworth uh, completely loses his marker, but let's let's see what went wrong. Yeah, so um, the Quakes setup under Almeida has always been heavy man marking all the way across the pitch, leaving one free, usually Alanis at center back, and leaving uh, the opposition's center back as well. Um, free in that regard. And the problems came initially started from the front where the Quake or the, the Sounders were able to find um, a free player, usually through rotations. And in the first instance, uh, Jordan Morris. And under Almeida, if you get beat 1v1 without heavy, heavier rotations, uh, there's a lot of problems that come arise from that. So the first situation, um, Jordan Morris is able to run three through free through the midfield, and because of the the lack of uh, zonal marking in this regard, Morris is able to run completely free through the middle of the park. No quakes players compressing space, trying to stop the ball, um, and that's where one of the the issues that actually didn't happen in the MLS's back tournament occurred was because when there were these transitional moments, players getting beat one v one. The Quakes actually dropped off into a more traditional back four shape. Carl, one of the reasons that this loss was so shocking and so surprising is because at the MLS's back tournament, the Quakes played Seattle to a scoreless draw. They, they kept Seattle off the scoreboard. Uh, and so I'm just curious what you think, uh, why the Quakes, uh, what's changed since the MLS's back tournament? Why the Quakes uh, are considerably worse? Yeah, so the reason why this wasn't happening in MLS's back is because there was more of a, a bridge between the traditional man-to-man -man marking all the way across the pitch and a more traditional zonal approach. So in these moments, um, very similar to the first goal um, this weekend, uh, uh, Sounders player is able to dribble past his man, highlighted here. But unlike in the past, the, um, the Quakes players are not actually – dropping into a back four shape like they were at Emerson's back. So there's more of a zonal approach, less concerned about picking up their highlighted mark um, 
traditional man marking is often often known as number marking. Um, but here at Allison's back, we can see that the player who was picking up this man initially has actually shifted over to help his player who got beat 1v1, and he's able to do both jobs. So he's able to stop the ball as well as cut off an angle to the approach. Um, and it seems to be lack of a coordination between the Quakes players or just a, 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 um, a harding of Almeida and his approach to actually just pick up your man, pick up a, uh, don't pick up the ball, don't switch. And that's why Jordan Morris was able to actually run through um, un, uncontested on this weekend. That's a very interesting observation, Carl, because I, it feels like since MLS is back, the man-to-man -man marking has been, uh, there hasn't really been the, the handoffs. It's like, mm -hmm. if your player gets by you, uh, you know, you need to find a way to be able to get back, pull a shoulder or do something else. And, and what I think you're showing here is that um, Almeida has some bit of te tactical flexibility that maybe is not being utilized right now. What else did you observe looking at uh, the, the tape from MLS's back in terms of things that have changed about how the Quakes handle these transition moments? As well, if I, uh, yeah, so if I drop to the next slate is here, it's it's also not even happening when there's immediate um, one to one opportunities to go to goal. We can see that the players here are dropping off, compressing space. I mean, there's is even pressure on the ball here. This is actually great shape regarding, um, I think it was, um, I think it was another turnover as they were trying to transition. So that's why they aren't in a, you know, a, a, a better curve shape here, but there's, Great pressure on the ball, not getting beat 1v1. But even if they were, and he was able to run free, these players are dropping off. And in the traditional moment, this man here would be following him. He would be tighter. He would be tighter. There'd be huge gaps going on um, that normally wouldn't happen. It's It seems to be um, a very odd choice considering how successful the MLS's back tournament was for the Quakes want to transition a little bit to Leeds United and so much of the commonality uh, talked about and discussed uh, specifically in, in punditry uh, between these two sides, the San Jose Earthquakes and Leeds United, who are newly promoted. Yesterday, Leeds went to Liverpool at Anfield, the newly crowned champions and the new promoted side, and uh, they actually dominated possession 52-48 and had more passes to Liverpool's um, 432 passes. They had 459. It, it clearly shows they kind of are not scared um, and they don't have the big names, uh, the, the so-called big names. So what can we kind of take away here from, from watching Leeds United and, and, and seeing something similar with the Quakes, knowing that they might not have the biggest names uh, to play with, but knowing that this strategy uh, is something uh, that can be successful? Yeah, so... Leeds United um, are similar in t terms of the uh, the personnel shortage that the Quakes have. I mean, the Earthquakes, as unfortunate as it is, um, are not one of the, the top teams in terms of roster talent compared. But they're able to show that Leeds, you can you can actually have a man marking approach while also compromising a bit when it comes to transitional moments. So Bielsa, who actually coached Almeida for Argentina, um, both coach in Mexico, heavy man marking all the way across the pitch. As they see, when they're actually defending in the opposition's third, it's very similar to what the Quakes do. You've got Jack Harrison uh, splitting the difference there, but nominally leaving Joe Gomez the opposition center back, which is something that the, the Sounders um, were able to do against the Quakes. Man marking in midfield, players jumping out to when they can transition, splitting the difference again. Um, but however, I'm sorry, actually as well, um, in this approach, this is defending a throw-in. They've got um, this will be Alanis for the Quakes man marking, leaving a free a, a free uh, a player free back there. Um, but when it comes to transitional moments, the Leeds United, which is actually something that the Quakes are capable of, have shown that when it's transitional moments, you can drop into a zone. This is a, a definition of a flat back for players tracking back, not necessarily picking up their man. Two players stopping the ball just to compress space. Um, so it seems to be this little bit of a trade-off that Bielsa, who is, as we know, is known as El Loco, is one of the most um, dogmatic coaches in the world. Um, and it's something that Almeida could probably learn from his, his former coaches actually picking up those sort of moments is you can man mark, but when it comes to crisis aversion mode, um, you need to be able to adapt your principles and um, change it that way. 
is it fair to say when 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 the pundits uh, and and different commentators chat about both teams and use similar words? Do you think that that's fair using you know quite daring or or even the words crazy to describe both teams? I would say yes, just in terms of the the personnel shortage we're, that we're talking about. But as as long as you actually adapt those principles, you are able to have the best of both worlds in terms of. Um, zonal marking and as well man marking because man marking if i go back to this slide here regardless of how good your rotations are you're going to have uh players who are just constantly on top of you it requires lots of running requires lots of space but as well if you're relying on players to be not beat 1v1 for saving goals odds are when it comes to players like for example you know sadio mane firmino those issues are going to occur when you're going to get that will be one v one. It's just inevitable. Um, and you see that in MLS, you know, Jordan Morris is one of the best, best players in the league. If you're relying on uh, a defensive midfielder to not get beat one v one, it's probably not the best idea to, to stay as dogmatic in that approach. You might just want to compress space and just deny. I mean, um, so I think those sort of, it's crazy if you're not adapting your principles, I would say. Carl, thank you so much for joining us today. So excited for your new opportunity at a world leader in soccer data, Stats Bomb. Can't wait to see what you do there. Uh, you've been fantastic to work with at American Soccer Analysis. And we really appreciate you taking the time to join us today to, to help us through some of these tactical uh, things that the Quakes could probably do better and, uh, and maybe you know, we're at MLS's back and now need to, to refine some of this to be successful me. in league play. That was Carl Carpenter uh, there who had the chance to chat with us earlier today. He'll be starting at Statsbomb in the United Kingdom uh, starting uh, later this week. Uh, Alex Morgan, you're there at Earthquakes Stadium. And I uh, just kind of want to get your final thoughts on on the lineup and, and the atmosphere as it continues to kind of build there uh, this evening and, and, and what you're expecting. Absolutely, Charles. We are moments away from kickoff here at Earthquakes Stadium. Uh, and I think the Quakes are in with a shot to get a result tonight. Uh, after the game against the Seattle Sounders on Thursday, I said that Paul Marie shouldn't be starting. Luis Felipe shouldn't be starting. And Marcos Lopez shouldn't be starting on the same side as Vaca. And Almeida, to his credit, has made all those changes and more. So he's clearly willing to experiment with his lineup. What I'm looking for now is to see him take the next steps and make some adjustments to his tactics as well. To have a plan B. To be willing to play a little more zonally in those crisis situations that Carl was talking about. And if they do that, they definitely won't allow seven goals tonight, at the very least. So I think they're still outmatched. Uh, Christian Pavon and if we see Chicharito returning from injury are phenomenal players that certainly outmatch the Quakes, but at least it looks like Almeida has put himself and his team in a position to get a result tonight, which certainly wasn't the case last Thursday. Thank you so much, uh, Alex. And uh, Jamin Moore just had to step away uh, to, to get ready for kickoff as well. Um, enjoy the 73rd California Classico, everyone. Uh, we are Black and Azul. Uh, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and we will be back with you with the entire team, Jamin Moore and Joel Soria, Alex Morgan and myself, uh, with uh, the post-game press conference so you don't want to miss it. Thanks so much for tuning in. Stay safe. We'll see you soon.